Today I'm going to be talking about this book called Painting Beautiful Watercolor Landscapes. It is Transforming Ordinary Places into Extraordinary Scenes. So this is by Joyce Hicks. And Joyce Hicks is a self-taught watercolor um, artist who um, said that watercolor found her in 1998 when she retired. So um, this book um, has so many beautiful watercolor paintings in it. Now I'm going to just go over um, a little bit about Joyce Hicks and how she found watercolor. So she says in her book um, she retired in 1998. She traded her um, brick home for a traveling home so um, she could travel across the United States um, to live a nomadic lifestyle. So she decided to give up her home and travel around and that's where she found watercolor. So she, on her way um, while she was in her um, traveling home, she stopped at art supply stores and picked up painting. Um, she noticed the different landscapes. And that's what inspired her to do some watercolor painting. So she's self-taught, she didn't go to school, and she decided, that, she said that watercolor found her. So she said it was never her intention to become an artist. Um, and But after she was inspired by all the different landscapes through traveling, she decided that she wanted to do the watercolor painting. So she says, um, and nowadays our world is so distracted that we don't even see all the beauty that is outside we don't even notice the landscapes we have a lot of we have our like cell phones and things and we don't really notice a lot of um what's around us because sometimes we can be distracted by our cell phones or just all these other different things that we fail to notice what's really outside so um, she said it's pure joy when we slow down and see things so she says um, she wants to show in this book she wants to show the most ordinary scenes can be transformed to the extraordinary so this book is basically um showing you just ordinary scenes of houses and trees and fields and she transforms those landscapes into extraordinary scenes so um she said the most common mistake that most beginner paintings is to say too much in the painting. She is a less is more type of person. So she doesn't use a lot of masking fluid or a lot of salt or a lot of extras when it comes to using watercolor. She just keeps it simple with simple paint brushes, um, simple supplies, and she just keeps things simple. But her work is just, I mean, there are just so many um, beautiful paintings, but I'm gonna go over um what's in this book i'm going to show a few pages and things like that but yeah basically she transforms the scenes she uses um she doesn't really paint the scene the exact color but she adds her own colors like to make it look brighter or to make the colors stand out she doesn't really copy the scene she she um talks about thinking like an artist and looking when you look at a scene to look and notice the shapes instead of just all the details she says to notice the shapes and it will be easier for you to paint so um she also talks about keeping an artist library so keeping um like books creating your own library you're looking at magazines and things to inspire you so um but yeah she's just this book is amazing so i'm gonna show what's in this book and i'm gonna go over a few things and like she uses a palette knife um, she uses palette knife with watercolor painting. Mostly um, a palette knife can be used in oil painting and acrylic painting, but you can also use a palette knife. So she uses a palette knife and talks about it in this book. So I'm going to go into this book and show you what's in here and why I like this book so much.
going to try to attempt to paint um, a painting that's kind of similar to Joyce Hicks out of her book painting beautiful watercolor landscapes so I'm going to paint a um, New Mexico scene a New Mexico landscape and I'm going to show you some of the materials that I'm going to use so first I'm going to use um, this Canson XL watercolor paper so this is a Canton XL watercolor paper. I believe this is a very reasonable watercolor paper. And then I'm gonna use a clip to clip the paper down so that the paper doesn't um, move while I put water on it. So I'm gonna use a large clip to clip onto this uh, watercolor paper. Uh, next, I'm going to use some QOR watercolors. And these are the, um, earth tone color so I have a Naples yellow transparent brown oxide Venetian red sap green indigo and raw umber so I'm gonna use some of these colors the QRR watercolors um, and this is kind of what I mixed out I'm also going to use so a few uh, Daniel Smith watercolors um, I'm gonna use a permanent red manganese blue hue and nickel azel yellow so i'm going to use uh qor watercolors and also um the daniel smith watercolors so here on this palette um is what i pretty much put out on the palette these are the colors um so we have the venetian red transparent brown oxide and naples yellow i have sap green indigo and i have raw umber so I've also added um, the uh, Permanent Red by Daniel Smith, the Manganese Blue Hue, and also the Nickel Azel Yellow. So we're going to see, I'm going to go with more of earth tones today. These are not going to be bright colors. These are not going to be neons or anything like that. These are going to be earth colors. So that's what I'm going to use. Um, I'm also going to use two jars of watercolor so these jars um i like to keep one for clean and then one to, for rinsing off the brush so it's good to have two jars of watercolor when you're painting i'm also going to use um some pens and pencils but i'm going to start off my watercolor with the pencil sketch so i'm probably going to use a pencil maybe a 2b pencil and also it's good to use a kneaded eraser when you're working with watercolor paper. 
and I'm gonna use a washcloth um, to wipe off my brush these are best to use um, instead of paper towels because you don't waste a lot of paper you don't create a lot of trash so I'm gonna use this to wipe my brushes um, I'm going to be using some watercolor brushes so I have um, some round brushes that I'm gonna use and I'm also going to use a mop brush so I'm going to use a mop brush and these are basically what I'm going to use I'm going to use this it's a da Vinci petite watercolor brush it's a mop brush and this is what it is it's a da Vinci petite and this is a Windsor Newton Cotman mop brush and we have a Windsor Newton Professional Watercolor Round Brush. So this is what I'm gonna use. And now I'm gonna start the watercolor painting. Oh, I forgot to mention, um, I'm gonna be using a plate, just a regular plate to mix off my colors. So this is what I'm gonna use to just keep as an extra space to mix my colors.
Thank you.